Hi, I'm Lisa Catworthy. I'm the Deputy Editor of Education in Chemistry, which is part of the Royal Society of Chemistry's education offering. So why are we at Research Ed? Well, because without research, education in chemistry and the Royal Society of Chemistry education teams offering wouldn't be anywhere near as useful to teachers. Why are we here at this time? Because research into effective continuing professional development and for example, the EEF's rapid review for remote teaching has informed how education chemistry and the wider RSC education team have responded to school closures and remote teaching during the current pandemic. Now, I might not be a chemist, but many of my colleagues are, and many of them have been teachers or have worked in academia, and they're all for an evidence-based approach to teaching. They're steeped in the research evidence for professional development, which is all good news for shaping the RSC's education offering. And there's plenty of evidence pointing to the value of PD. There's no question it is valuable, but that doesn't mean it's completely cut and dried. There's uncertainty, there's room for more work, and there's room for discussion. Just ranging over the last few years, for example, there's the DFE standards for teacher PD, that was 2016. These standards say effective PD is a partnership between senior leadership team, teachers, PD providers, and it needs to be focused on pupil outcomes, underpinned by evidence and expertise, include collaboration and challenge, um, be sustained and prioritised. Um, this view was echoed again this year by Curie's developing great leadership of CPDL. But in 2018, Sam Sims and Harry Fletcher Wood questioned the standards. It wasn't a throw the baby out with the bathwater approach at all, but it piqued our interest. And in fact, education in chemistry um, picked up on this. And we asked Emily Perry to review the paper. Um, and then she suggested, you know, it's, it's maybe we just need to ditch this checklist, checklist approach uh, in favour of focusing on the teacher and not the process itself. But then again this year, Harry Fletcher Wood, um, after another paper, has written recently in his blog that the best way forward is to take the conclusions we already have from research, throw in the information from PD programmes that we know are successful and effective, but then we also need to add in and combine the knowledge that we have about how people learn and change from cognitive and behavioural science. And it's this last point that's been in my mind as our team has approached supporting chemistry teaching since mid-September. We have professional development for teachers, specific courses that they've been running, but that's not all. Um, I'll just add in a couple of URLs if you want to go and check out these things, Emily's article um, and the PD page on the website. So what's happening now? Well, since Ireland, Scotland, Wales, Northern Ireland and England um, all began to announce school closures amid the pandemic, the RSC education team, well, we've all been asking ourselves, how can we support teachers to teach, improve their practice and effectively continue their PD during the current situation? And in fact, does what we know about teacher PD, although we know it's incomplete and we recognise more work needs to be done, but do we think it applies to the current situation from teaching remotely, whether online, teaching at home, distance learning for students, well, yes, some of it does, but there's surely more to learn. And we welcome the EEF's rapid review on remote learning. That's really helped us consider what we do, as well as um, similarly the Ambition Institute's Guide to Remote Teacher Development. And we hope that what we're doing is relevant as well. So what are we trying? Well, we made all of our teacher PD courses free. So I don't know if you can see this graph particularly well, but when we made all of the um, courses free, um, sort of mid-March, you can see there wasn't much take up going on. But by the time we started sending emails about this, there was a massive surge, over 350 subscriptions in one day in April here. There's a couple of other spikes. They have corresponded with us sending emails or making some kind of announcement about, you know, reminding people that the offering is there. We're really, really pleased with how this has gone. Um, the unique subscribers have, have gone up from sort of maybe an average of about 35 in a month to over a thousand, for example, in April. We're also really pleased with the fact that teachers are not just picking a module out of a course. They are tending much more than before to complete a whole course. For example, um, 
these different coloured lines are one for each four of the different um, courses that we offer. Um, I think these are all subject specific ones. Yes, they are. Um, now these are the figures for the people that completed the whole course, read all the modules and did all the worksheets, etc. for April and May. Um, and just checking the figures, um, that's a thousand percent increase on numbers who would normally complete that. That's compared with the same period last year. So teachers want professional development still. They might be remote teaching and grappling with what's going on, but they still want this kind of development as is evidenced by this. Um, again, URL, just in case you need it. I will do that throughout the talk. So webinars, something else we've been trying. You might be familiar with the fact that the Royal Society of Chemistry's education team have our wonderful regional education coordinators. They're based all over the country um, and they're regularly out and about visiting schools, meeting teachers, putting on demonstrations and talks. Obviously, the current situation, they are all grounded, but that doesn't stop them. They've simply taken their outreach sessions online. So far, they've provided 124 sessions. That's primary and secondary um, and welcomed at over 700 participants. Now, they've used a poll um, which went out in some of their newsletters um, and they've also used exit surveys and some feedback from during these sessions to influence and you know, for us to find out what topics teachers most want to see. Um, and this is the list that came out top. Just five that I've picked out there, um, but they're things that we will endeavour to cover. And we also um, wanted to find out how useful teachers were finding this and whether they would recommend these courses, these webinars to um, other teachers. Um, so we did what's called a net promoter score. You might be familiar with these from websites. It's sometimes a little pop up that appears and asks you if you would recommend this website or promotion, etc., to your fellow colleagues or your friends or family. So we did pretty much this um, and a net promoter score they can be negative, that is bad, you're not, you're not being recommended. They can go up to, uh, down to minus 100 and up to 100, which is really good. So basically you wanna think anything in a positive number is good. So when we asked how much would you say your skills or ideas for engaging students with science and chemistry have developed as a result of this session, we're really pleased when the number came out as a plus 36, that is a really positive indicator that we're on the right track with this. So the other question we asked, much simpler, would you recommend this session to a colleague? And I'm very pleased to say that was an even higher positive number of 58. So that's really reassuring for us to find out that what we're doing is relevant and useful to teachers. Again, website URL if you want to go and check it out. So we also added a new tab to the website, which we called our remote teaching support hub. There's an awful lot of this. It's brought together every article and resource that's related to coronavirus and remote teaching. Um, and our analytics tell us that this is doing really well. Um, for example, um, we put up a remote, uh, we put up this um, starter slide for the science behind hand washing. It's something we did quite early on. Um, it's still there. We don't take anything down. Um, and it's been downloaded 4,959 times as of today, um, which is the 12th of June. Um, normally we'd expect something like that to be downloaded about 500 times. So we're really pleased about that, that we have provided something that teachers are finding useful. Similarly, you can see on that grab from the website, those numbers 11 to 14, 14 to 16, et cetera. They're where we've curated resources together that are appropriate for topics taught to that age group. They've all been viewed um, in excess of nine and a half thousand times, which tells us that teachers are finding them useful. They are following the links and they are going to download resources that will help them with those topics. Um, there was also one we did specifically on practicals that went down very well. Um, it pointed people in direction of um, simulations and videos, etc., for practicals that, that they could share with their students to do online, uh, look at online, and that's been viewed in excess of 15,000 times. So we're very pleased with that. Um, we also, we're not just online, Education and Chemistry has a print edition as well. Um, and normally that gets sent to schools, um, to every school in the uh, UK and Ireland. Um, but we wanted 
teachers to have the opportunity to have it sent to home, um, which you know seemed a sensible thing to do given that everyone is at home rather than in their school. Um, and we're really pleased that in the very short sign up period that we had for the May print issue, we had 1300 people sign up for that. We're currently, as I speak, um, doing a similar thing for the July issue, but um, by the time you're watching this, it's probably over, I'm afraid. Um, and so far, as of uh, Thursday this week, we had uh, almost 2,000 sign up, which we're really pleased about. And we're hoping um, we'll have a few more before we get to that point. So another thing we've done, um, we've spun up some videos, um, a, a new stream of content called How I Teach. Now these are specifically about approaches or strategies that you can use to teach particular year groups or um, do particular um, topics or develop skills with your students. For example, um, David Patterson's talking about data collection skills. Um, Christy Turner was talking about quizzing remotely. Catherine Smith um, has talked us through how she uses a, a slideshow with her year 12. Um, these have gone down really well. Um, for example, in the first 24 hours, David, David Patterson has only just gone online. That was viewed 241 times in the first 24 hours, which we're really pleased about. Um, so again, we're really pleased with the analytics that we're getting from this and what they're telling us. Um, the other thing, I guess, with the videos is we can tell from the analytics whether people get bored and switch off in the first few minutes and don't watch the whole thing. Um, but the majority of viewers are staying the duration. Um, which we have kept to just a few minutes. Again, URLs if you want to go and check out the Remote Teaching Support Hub. So then some of you may be aware that we have Teach Chemistry, uh, or you might have known it by its older name, uh, Learn Chemistry Partnership. This provides events, resources, um, discounts um, for teachers and technicians in secondary schools, colleges, teacher training institutions. Um, we're aiming basically to help teachers and technicians deliver inspirational chemistry teaching and to support um, the creation of a, a supportive and effective department. Um, it's free to sign up and that's something that we've monitored. So um, from the 15th of March until the end of May, sign-ups increased 40% over the previous period of the same length. Um, so we're very pleased about that. We hadn't put any extra marketing in there or anything. Um, there wasn't a hard sell. That was purely teachers being in the current situation and thinking, okay, this could help me. So something else um, that you get as part of Teach Chemistry um, are newsletters. And we've been monitoring these. Um, you can opt in and out on various different newsletters, regional ones, general education ones, like this one that I've just displayed. Um, and we can track how people respond to these. Now, the open rate, um, the people who actually bother to open the email rather than just see the subject line in their email box and then don't read it, has increased. But more importantly for us, the click-through rate has increased. Now, that's the number of people that actually click on one of those boxes like that, get all the details, or click on a link and go and visit the website or the event page or follow up that piece of information. And that normally sits at about 25%. For the April um, education newsletter, it was up to 44%. So that's really reassuring for us that we are providing these newsletters with information that teachers want. Again, if you want to go and check out Teach Chemistry, there's the URL. Sorry, I can't help the shameless plug. It comes with the territory. Um, so what are we learning from all of this? Because that's, after all, the title of my talk, what are we learning about um, online CPD? Well, we're learning about what is effective and we're learning about what teachers want. Um, so we've used various different methods to evaluate this. We've run polls on the website. We, as I've mentioned already, use analytics. We can send out surveys. We do some exit. We give exit sheets in the webinars. We have a reader panel for EIC. So if you get the print edition, you can sign up to the reader panel and answer them questions via a smart survey. We use the analytics for our social media channels. That's mainly Twitter, but we also use Facebook and YouTube. So how are we going to use all of this information? Well, it's not empirical evidence. It's not systematic research. Um, but we can use all of this evidence um, 
and all of this information and data to inform what we do. It's, that's how we approach everything. Um, and it helps us to support teachers further. And, and that can only become more important as we enter the next period of what's going to happen with schools. We're currently possibly looking at some kind of hybrid learning um, when schools return um, in England in September and um, Scotland is obviously earlier. Um, and that is going to influence what we're doing. In fact, it's already influencing what we're doing. So what are we going to do next? Well, the most important thing, I mentioned it first, is conference week because that happens uh, the whole of next week from Monday the 22nd. If you want to find out about it, if you go to the website, you'll see all the sessions that are going on there. Uh, I can even bore you again if you like. Um, but the, all of the conferences that um, the education team and the education coordinators would normally put on, we have tried to transfer online. Um, so do go and have a look and, and see what's there. So I think from CPD to um, how to use EIC to tackling specific topics, um, some really notable, notable speakers like John Holman and Harry Fletcher Wood, Ed Walsh, for example. Um, what else are we going to do? Uh, we're going to keep offering PD sessions and we're going to make some new ones. There's going to be some more interactive ones because that's been one of the negative comments that we've had about that so far. We're going to continue the programme of webinars into the autumn term and support teachers as they move into the next phase of learning, possibly hybrid learning. We'll continue to support the offering from Teach Chemistry, uh, improve the support from Teach Chemistry, sorry. Um, and we are developing yet more new content for education in chemistry. We don't want to stand still because we know teachers um, and teaching are always coming up against new challenges, whether that's in a pandemic or not. Um, so shameless plug, sorry, can't help it, as I've already said. Um, if you want to get in touch with us, if you want to find out what we do, we're not just for science, not just for chemistry teachers, we are for science teachers. For example, um, you'll find the seven simple rules for science teaching under the collections tab, um, which was very much written with all science teachers in mind. And it was written by teachers of all of the different sciences. Um, some of those names you'll recognise from this conference as well. So thank you very much for your time. I hope you found that interesting. Um, and now I'm off to re watch some of yours. Thank you. <laughs>